Here's an interesting second order differential that we can solve using a reduction of order technique. Now, we can actually jump straight to an answer if we do y2 is equal to y1 integral of e to the negative integral p of x dx divided by y1 squared, and then this is all just uh, integrated with dx. This is a formula we can use to just uh, quickly find the answers if we're using a reduction of order technique. So all we need to do is just plug this in. y2 equals the sine of x integral e to the negative. Well, p of x in this case, p of x refers to the first derivative, but we don't have the first derivative. Therefore, p of x is going to be equal to zero. And that means that we're taking the integral of zero, dx, and dividing that by, well, y1 is just going to be sine of x, but it's kind of sine x squared in there. And then this is going to be over dx. The interesting thing here is that we have this e to the negative integral of zero. Well, that's going to be somewhat canceling out to um, e to the negative c, all right, because the integral of zero is just going to be c, and that's kind of it for the top part. For the bottom part, we still have this sine squared of x, and now these signs and that sign, those are not going to cancel. This is outside of the integral. Um, so we have to deal with that. But what we can do with this e to the negative c is we can actually pull that out. Keep in mind that usually when we have these homogeneous equations, uh, these answers, we could say c1 y2, oh, c1 y1 plus c2 y2, and we could put constants in front of our answers. And so if we have a constant here, e to the c is just basically c again. If we have that constant, we can actually pull that out and absorb it into this constant. So we're just going to like cancel this out from our equation because it's not going to impact anything. So we're literally going to say the same thing. Is this is going to be sine of x integral of 1 over sine squared of x dx. Now it turns out that 1 over sine squared of x, you might be tempted to sort of maybe do something with the sine squared of x equals like uh, 1 half cosine x or something like that. We don't have to do anything like that. We just have to realize that the sine squared of x on the bottom is the same thing as saying cosecant squared x on the top. And if we're doing that integral, then we should realize that this is simply going to be cotangent or negative cotangent of x. All right. Now we still have this whole sine of x thing that we have to deal with. But the cool thing is that cotangent is the same thing as saying negative cosine of x divided by sine of x, and now the sine of x cancels out. <laughs> There's no dx here. But anyway, so I think we have our answer is that y2 is going to be equal to, and let's put this negative sign, let's absorb that into the c2 constant as well, so we don't even have to worry about that. So I know it's kind of crazy, but essentially we've simplified all this stuff into cosine of x being our y2. And then once we again plug that into this homogeneous equation over here, we get that uh, we have c1 sine of x plus c2 cosine of x. And uh, yeah, so that's some pretty cool stuff. <laughs>